All right. Today we're talking about GMRS. This is a new radio from Ochang, uh, provided by Buy2WayRadios.com, and it is the KG805G GMRS radio today on Ham Radio 2.0. Okay, guys, good evening. Uh, I'm Jason, KC5HWB. On this uh, channel, we do reviews and how-tos of everything that's new in amateur radio. Uh, but today, we're talking about GMRS, the General Mobile Radio Service. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> the General Mobile Radio Service. It is, the GMRS is basically, if you don't know what GMRS is, basically, it is FRS with a paid license that gives you more license privileges, okay, and allows you to use more power, better radios, and repeaters, okay? You don't have to take a test. All you have to do is submit a form online. I'll put a, a link to the application on the FCC database in the YouTube description below. You go in there, you fill out your information. Um, if you have an FRN number as an amateur radio operator, then you log in to your FRN with using your FRN number and your password, log into your FCC universal licensing, licensing system account, go to apply new license, choose G GMRS, go through the whole fill out, out the form. Um, you pay a $70 fee. It asks you if you are a convicted felon, choose yes or no, <laughs> hopefully no. And you click on submit, you pay the 70 bucks, and then they email you a call sign. That's it. That's all. And then you have all of the GMRS privileges. Um, I'm going to put an overlay here for all the channels on GMRS. Some of the channels are shared with FRS, the family radio service. Those are the little cheap um, Motorola talk about HTs that you can buy at Walmart. You can buy a two pack for like 40 bucks or something like that. Um, they're limited to two watts, I think it is. Um, and that you can't use a radio with a removable antenna legally on FRS. Uh, there's a lot of more restrictions because it is an unlicensed service, but GMRS upgrades that. It gives you the use of Part 95 radios. Um, it gives you the use of 40, 50 watt mobile radios with an external antenna, and it gives you the use of repeaters. So it's a cool system to use if you're fam and once you buy a license, your family is covered. So if I buy a license and I take a family of four, I don't have four people in my fam family, but if I were to take my my brother and uh, my nephew and my wife and my sister-in-law and all of them out somewhere, we could all use the family, the GMRS uh, radio service because I have a license and I'm sharing it with my family. So, um, kind of a neat uh, idea if you can't talk your family into getting ham licenses. Ham radio is better, but GMRS is a good option. So today we're looking at the KG805G. Again, this radio was furnished to me by the nice folks at buy2wayradios.com. You can see in the description below what the radio is, uh, where to find it, and all the details on their website about it. So I'm going to switch to this view over here. This is a very basic radio package, nothing extraordinarily special. That. If, you, uh, if you've ever used a Nochang radio, this looks just like the charger for the UV8 Delta, UV8 Echo, uh, UV, uh, D1P, uh, KG UV D1P. Uh, the recently reviewed um, UV7 Delta that was on this channel. So this is brand new, obviously. You can tell. There's that. That's the plug that goes into the back of the charger. Bring the radio out here. There's that. Very basic screen there. No DTMF pad. Plug that in. This looks very similar to uh, the, the battery. It's not exactly the same, but it looks very similar to the battery on a UV7 Delta, which again was just reviewed on this channel. It is a 1700 milliamp hour battery right there. So, if I could, oh, okay, so you put it down in the bottom click it at the top like that. It's got indentions right there where the battery fits in and you put it down there and then click it into the top so it doesn't slide in the way I was used to. And nothing else in the box so let's switch back over here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and put this out of the way. This is a mono band radio. It's going to be uh, UHF only because GMRS is UHF only. It's around the 460 to 460, 462 to 467 megahertz range. There's a lot of channels inside of that range. Again, you saw. Hopefully, you saw the. Uh, So hopefully you saw the description just then. So out of the box, which you just saw, I just opened it. So there's not, um, nothing's been done to this yet. So out of the box, it comes with all these channels programmed in right here. So it's got 30, cha 30 channels programmed to it, into it. You can see on the right side of the screen right there, that's 30. Um, so channel one, through channel seven is on high power you see the h on the far left of the screen right there when you go to eight through through one four that is because those are those are on low power so the reason you have it that way where you have channels eight to fourteen is because those three channels, I'm sorry, those few channels, uh, what's it, six channels, those are shared between GMRS and FRS. And if you look on the frequency table, you will see that the max power is 0 0.5 watts, even for GMRS users. Um, they're also narrowband. So you can look at... Um, Went ahead and brought up the channel list, which I didn't overlay earlier. So these are the FRS channel and FRS power and then FRS bandwidth and then GMRS power, GMRS bandwidth. So you can see on channels one through seven that they are shared with FRS. Uh, FRS is limited to two watts. GMRS is limited to five watts. FRS is limited to narrow band. GMRS is a 20 kilohertz, which is wideband but not as wide as ham because ham radio wideband is 25 kilohertz okay so then you scroll down here to channels 8 through 14 which is um yeah and you see the frequencies here they're all in the 462 to 467 range and both frs 8 through 14 both frs and gmrs users are limited to half a watt and narrowband 12.5 kilohertz and then it goes back to 15 um and on 15 through 22, GMRS users are upgraded to 50 watts. FRS is still limited to 2 watts. But channels 15 through 22, GMRS users are allowed up to 50 watts. And then you have your repeater channels. Or I'm sorry, then you have your channels. Uh, then you have channels that are not shared with... FRS, that's these last ones down here. You'll see NA in the fields for FRS channel power and bandwidth. So you get uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different channels in GMRS that FRS users don't even have access to. So what that basically allows you to do is that allows you to use the radio in an environment where maybe you have a GMRS license, but your friends don't. Or you're going out camping or hunting with friends and... Uh, You've got the license and you want to use some local repeaters and talk on other GMRS frequencies, but you want to talk to your buddies who are hunting with you also, and they just have FRS radios so you can all communicate with one another. So that makes it really easy to do that sort of thing. So we're going to go back over here to the radio view again. So channels 14, Five. now 15, through 22. Which is those? Those are the ones on the screen we saw. Those are limited to a 50 watt. 15 through 22 is limited to 50 watt. Of course, this radio only does about five watts. It doesn't do the full 50 watts out of an HT. You know, thank goodness. <laughs> that's not gonna. That's not. Uh, wouldn't be a good idea if it was. So then you go into channels 23 through th through 30 are repeater channels. Now, one thing is kind of disappointing. Um, I'm not seeing it just on, on first glance. But if we go over here to the website for Buy Two-Way Radios, um, there is a 
uh, this, at the uh, at the time of this recording, uh, the radio is out of stock. I imagine they've probably had a really big run on GMRS radios right now related to the world events ongoing. The uh, human malware virus that's currently perpetrating through the United States. So, um, let's see. I'm not finding or set up. Yeah, so you can get programming software right there. Uh, it did not come with a programming cable. Uh, we'll go through and look at the sides of the radio here in just a second. Um, let's see, that's that stuff there. Description. I would like to see if it tells you 22 GMRS channels and 8 GMRS repeater channels. So I would like to know what those frequencies are for, for the 8 GMRS repeater channels. I wish it would tell you that. Um, it has some FAQ here. But at first glance, it does not have a listing of what the frequencies are. So you can easily find the frequencies on GMRS channels by Googling it. There's a Wikipedia page that has that. Not a problem there. But I would like to know what pre-programmed repeaters there are in there. And of course, since you can get programming software for this radio, you can change anything you want to. It does hold... It only holds 30 channels. So those are pre-programmed channels. So you can go in there and change that if you want to. You're not limited to... I mean, you can do repeaters kind of the same way you can do repeaters on ham radio. It's you can uh, you can make a revert a plus five or a minus five reverse between four sixty two and four sixty seven and the and the various frequencies that are in there. They're all twenty kilohertz. Uh, it looks like spectrum uh, wideband, so that kind of makes it easy that way. But um, you would not be able to but but it is more limiting because it's just one band and there's not much else to it besides that but you can't go in there and change it apparently because you can it they they sell programming software for it so you can go in there and do that so here's the programming cable that goes on the side or here is the port for the programming cable on the side and of course it'll take a microphone let me make sure that's in the light it's got a little icon there on the side of the uh, of the the cover for a headphones and a microphone standard looking programming plug um the back of the battery or yeah the back of the battery and the radio where the charger sits it does have a push to talk and two programming buttons right there so i'm gonna oh okay so the top programming button goes to fm radio the bottom programming button opens up the squelch just like that so menu has 23 options in the menu you can change the transmit and receive led colors you can change the programming on the pf pf1 and pf2 are these buttons right here you can change that scan receive um transmit and receive d uh digital pl tone transmit and receive uh ctcss ctcss is perfectly legal in gmrs so you can set a CTCSS tone on a, on a transmit and receive and talk to your buddies on a, on a legal channel and you be a little bit more private in that regard. People can set the same CTCSS tone and listen to you, of course, but people may not know where you are. So you can turn the beep off. You can turn the voice off. You, it has a Vox. It has a timeout timer. has a Roger beep. So, hey, we're all... We're all, all good. As long as it has a Roger beep, then we're, we're dealing with uh, O-Chang radios, right? So, and you can change the squelch there. Exit button there. Just like that. And I'm not hitting any repeaters <laughs> where I'm at now. So, the good thing about this radio is that it is pre-programmed, easy to use, lightweight, about this big here. Uh, this is Here's my Anytone D878 radio. It's a bit smaller than the D878. So it's just what I have sitting on my desk right now. <laughs> but, um, but a really good, uh, and it does have a belt clip that goes in the back. I didn't put it on yet, but it's right there. Um, really good. It's got a channel selector knob and a volume knob on the top. And then just 
simple buttons on the front, no DTMF pad. Uh, there's not repeater control or, or all-star or anything like that on GMRS, not legally anyway. Um, standard antenna that is removable, so you could take this and add it to a UHF amp that covers the 460 to 470 range. Uh, you can add a bigger antenna. You can add an abri antenna if it's wideband enough, I guess. Um, you can add an external antenna, put a mag mount on your car and, and drive down the road and uh, use, a, use a handheld microphone that can plug in here, just like a, a regular um, O-Chang radio for ham radio. So it's a good option for only 80 bucks um, that has more power and a better receiver than most things would buy in Motorola talkabouts off the shelf at Walmart. So that's a, that's a, good, that's a good way to look at it there. Um, I do recommend buy two-way radios because they've got really good customer service. And um, if you just Google this radio, the KG-805G, like golf, um, they're the, their website's the first one to come up. So I don't know if they're the only ones selling it at this time. I've not looked, but they do at least have the radio, and it's a good choice if you're getting into GMRS. Now, one thing I will say, I went and looked up my own. I've had a GMRS license for a number of years. And I went and looked up my license before I hit record on this video today. And my license expired in December. I'm recording this video in March of 2020. My license expired about four months ago, three to four months ago, something like that. And I never got any notification. I looked in, I logged in my, uh, with my FRN number and my password to the FCC ULS. And I saw, and I looked up all my information and I'm like, okay, all of this is correct. My phone number's in there. My email address is in there. I never got any notification that the thing was expiring and it expired. And now to renew it, I have to sign a waiver and pay an extra $170 for a waiver. The alternative to that is just go sign up for a new, go sign up for a new GMRS license, which I've done that. I went before I, I hit record today, I went and I signed up for a new GMRS license. So my call sign will change. So I'll probably do, I've got, I've got at least one, if not two more GMRS radios to review on this channel, I'm going to be doing some more GMR, GMRS stuff upcoming. Maybe testing some local repeaters. There's two, there's two repeaters in Dallas, and there are several repeaters around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex that are on GMRS and open for everybody to use. Kind of a neat uh, thing there. But here's the kicker, okay? If it had been my ham radio license, the ARRL would have let me know about the expiration six months beforehand. I think it's six months might be 90 days it's either 90 or 180 days and i could have renewed it so the arrl would have taken care and not allowed me to miss my license expiring if it were my ham radio license there's no entity or organization that's watching over gmrs just fcc it's straight between you and fcc you just pay money you get the license and there you go but apparently when it expires they're not really good about telling you about it so that's something to think about for all those people who uh, have something to say about the ARRL. 73, guys, thanks for watching. 73 is a ham radio term. It means best wishes to you. <laughs> and all you GMRS folks out there, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe below. We're going to be doing some more videos about GMRS upcoming. Catch you next time.